All right, welcome back to the slideshow. I'm Dakota Jackson. I'm a trombonist here in New Orleans. I just got my master's from the University of New Orleans in jazz studies. And uh, I'm just trying to uh, cultivate an interest and an appreciation of the trombone. I'm Benjamin Wilkes. I, uh, I'm a band director up here at Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. I also am a fly fishing guide for Spring River Flies, Spring River Flies and Guides up here at Mammoth Spring. And I played the bass trombone. All right. Uh, we're going to do current events real fast. What you got for us, babe? Uh, so recently, recently, trombone hasn't been in current events very much, uh, mostly because, I mean, there hasn't been very much opportunity for it to be. But in some good news, uh, both the Getson and BAC manufacturing shops are up and running now. They are starting to open up, and so operations are back, and so we should see some good quality horns coming from those two companies soon. And uh, normally during this section, which that's good news, by the way, but uh, normally during this section, we talk about our week and how everything's gone. And uh, just being completely honest with you guys, we're trying to double up so we can get a little backlogged here. And so we recorded yesterday. So not a lot has happened since then, but uh, Ben had some stuff happen. What's up with that, Ben? Uh, yeah, so my daughter is making some serious progress. Uh, she's and for those of you who don't know, I do have an eight-month-old daughter at the time, or she's eight months now. And uh, so she's been making some serious progress. And today, uh, just got a video chat with my wife, and she was pulling herself up in the crib, like, on her feet. So that was something pretty cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's uh, great seeing all the progress she's making. Um, so our topic this week is trombone and popular media and trombone being played or uh, popping up with people who are not trombonists. And uh, I was thinking about the topic, and the first person I wanted to talk about actually was a trombonist, because I was thinking about popular media, the trombone, and like often I think now we think like that's not hand in hand, but it's funny to think that at one point, trombone was the popular media. I mean, Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey were like the pop stars of the day i mean it's kind of funny to think about but glenn miller and justin bieber were kind of like the same level of cool at the time so uh which do you got anything on that ben yeah so uh so tommy dorsey for example actually had 286 billboard chart hits and the dorsey band had 17 number one hits so if you could imagine seeing a trombone player at the top of the billboard hits 17 times, uh, that's, I mean, that's what it was, was, that was a reality, especially between the 30s and the 40s. And so that was going on. And then, of course, there's Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller was a completely different animal. Uh, so we know that he started the Air Force, the Air Force band, the Airmen of Note. Um, but actually, probably one of the reasons that Glenn Miller is so popular is because uh near the height near the height of his band's fame uh in the middle of world war ii his plane leaving from the uk uh actually disappeared and so there's all sorts of interesting uh stories and the conspiracy theories involving that from people thinking that he was assassinated on his way to peace talks with nazi germany yeah or even some people believe he uh he had a heart attack while re heart attack in the middle of a brothel in Paris. Now I don't like to believe that. I, <laughs> the common, the common, uh, common story is that they think that it's the carburetor iced over in the plane that he was in. Um, but still, it's pretty neat to think though. Trombone at one point, at least, was in the top of media, and probably if they had a podcast like we do now, they probably would have an easier time. <laughs> yeah i mean uh glenn miller actually was awarded the first gold record and uh i mean yeah these guys i mean the fact that there's conspiracy theories around their death i think says a lot i mean these guys were really popular and they were really wealthy i mean tommy dorsey was really well off so what did uh what you find when you were digging up famous people who happened to play trombone then Okay, so yeah, I thought this would be very simple. As we when we decided we were going to go on this topic, I, I I was saying, okay, this is going to be easy. I was thinking that there would be 
tons. And there are a good number and a lot of surprises. But uh, I was kind of surprised about how difficult it was to find some of these people. Um, some popular ones that at least I, that were confirmed by multiple sources were uh, Bill Ingvall. If you're, uh, I, I imagine our listeners probably aren't very uh, familiar with the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, but maybe some of them are. I, I don't know how that demographic works out. Uh, but if you do know Bill Ingvall, I imagine you also know Tony Stewart, the NASCAR driver. <laughs> and uh, he also played trombone. Uh, I'm sorry if I offended anybody there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, so Bill Ingvall, we had Tony Stewart. Uh, I know Cody's got a couple that I don't, I want to make sure to not name. Um, a big one that I found was actually uh, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith studied music in college for quite a bit. He actually went to a, uh, he went to Grace Moravian Church in North Carolina, where he learned trombone from his minister. Um, if you guys aren't, aren't familiar with Moravian churches, they use trombones quite a bit in the middle of their service. And so that was something, that was something pretty neat. Yeah, uh, even though Andy wasn't a trombone major, he was just an all around musician. He was a bass, a singer, and, uh, but he apparently, though, there are multiple accounts of him playing trombone and even tuba at times. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, uh, there are also some NFL players or NFL players. Uh, Lamos Brown, he was a offensive tackle for the Lions. And then the Buccaneers have a current player right now, actually, uh, Donovan Smith. And uh, he also played trombone for a bit. And he was actually to the point where he was going to stick with trombone all the way through, but his principal made him play football because he was a big guy. So I thought, I thought that was interesting and kind of, uh, kind of said something about American society, but yeah, those are some examples that I was able to pull up. What about you? Yeah, man. Uh, you're talking about Andy Griffith and the church thing. I think that we'll definitely dive back into this later. And I know we talked about a little bit in our first episode, just this, thing with the trombone and sacred music and secular music and what it's meant to sacred music man i think that's super cool and definitely something i think we should look into in the future um the first person i'm going to talk about here that we get into is nelly furtado uh i think she's a pretty famous pop star i i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm just gonna say up front that i don't uh i listen to like a lot of jazz and a lot of classical and like a lot of trombonists so i am a little bit out of the know i'm sure Delia furtado is super popular um <laughs> but it was kind of new to me um and she's a portuguese portuguese canadian singer and i you know her apparently her album whoa nelly was kind of got her going with the, the tunes i'm like a bird and turn off the light and then in 2006 she did the album loose which uh, i guess kind of formed the sound of the 2000s so She's been a really successful pop star. But uh, I found a lot of stuff about her really interesting. Her parents, she's a first generation Canadian. Her parents were from Portugal. Um, and at the age of four, she started singing Portuguese, which uh, is like a really beautifully sang language. Uh, if you're not familiar, I think in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. And uh, like Brazilian singers, I think just sound amazing. I actually went to school with a chick who learned Portuguese so she could sing Brazilian sambas and stuff. But at the age of nine, she started playing the trombone and the ukulele. And then she performed in a Portuguese marching band. And then I, uh, I found an interview with her. So I found an interview with her when she's talking about the trombone. And uh, I just, I'm going to pull up this little clip here real fast. Because I, I was, <laughs> this is what made me give her her own section right here. I played the whole time. Because I played the trombone like... Seven days. That's a really so, nice instrument. I know, like you can only be so cool while you play the trombone. Like it's cool on, in a different kind of way. So what about albums? I mean, My own swagger into the trombone. <laughs> what was the first album? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I know that was quick, but she said she played seven days a week, so she was obviously a devoted student. And right before this, she had said she was popular, and uh, I liked how the guy said, "Oh, it's a nerdy instrument," and. Uh, she was like, well, it has like its own style of cool. And then as he tries to move on to the next question, she was saying that 
it had its own swag and so i like that she even now as a pop star wasn't just like oh this was some geeky thing i did like i really enjoyed the trombone i mean she said it helped keep her grounded so i like that you know i i feel like uh whether i like it or not the trombone probably affects my personality in some way <laughs> overall um if nothing else, by just spending so much time in a practice room, you know, probably have to be some level of crazy to put in this much work, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. So um, I think we're going to take a short break here and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back to the slideshow. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, somebody that we didn't, we didn't mention earlier, uh, we did talk about Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller, uh, and they were popular musicians of their time. And a lot of guys might be wondering why I'm going to throw this guy in that same category. It's not because I think their playing is similar in any form or fashion, but I honestly believe that uh, Jimmy Pankow, for, for a time, at least is very similar in the fact that he was a trombone player who was in the mainstream uh he it wasn't like this this subsection of jazz or anything like this he played in a rock band whenever rock was the popular music and so Jane, uh jimmy pankow he was a trombonist for the band chicago for quite some time uh or he still is uh he's played since 1967. jimmy pankow started playing the trombone when he was eight years old, which I thought was interesting because nowadays we start people off normally around 12. So he had an early start. Uh, I kind of uh, uh, associate with him a bit because he actually went to college on a full ride scholarship at Quincy College where he studied the bass trombone. So we have a bass trombone player here who realized the money was in tenor trombone, which is unfortunate. <laughs> But uh, for those of you guys who are wondering, like I said, uh, Pankow, he writes a lot of the music. I am, he does write most of the horn lines for the band. I do know that for sure. Uh, he's pretty much he's the go-to horn player in the band, even though they do have two other horn players there. Um, and also, like I said, it's just neat to see trombone in the mainstream. I got to see Chicago a couple of years ago, actually. We, we were uh, front row over in Little Rock. Uh, at Riverfest. I don't know, Cody, if you've ever been to Riverfest, but uh, that that is an experience if you haven't been. Uh, I think it's changed quite a bit, but anyways, yeah, so we got to see them, and a lot of the, a lot of the original members of the band uh, have either passed away or left due to, different, due to differences, but James Pankow has been there the whole time, which is neat because that he, he is who people usually recognize when they're thinking Chicago, at least Who's, who are left anyways. Uh, for the trombone players, which I imagine all of you guys are, uh, who are wondering what instruments he played on, because people are wanting to know that. Uh, so he plays on a 3B Silver Sonic for his recordings. So if you listen to any of the recordings, that's the instrument he's going to be playing on. And then for any of his live performances, he actually plays on the Yamaha 691, which he's, he claims that the only reason he plays on the Yamaha is because it is lighter. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Chicago play, uh, they move around a lot, and so I can see why a heavier horn would be a hindrance. Uh, he definitely, definitely milks it and is out there uh, all over the stage. It's entertaining, but it is something different. You know, some people might not might not necessarily be fans, but like I said, I just think he's a good representative of the trombone community. Yeah, man. I mean, he's probably the richest trombone player alive. I'm definitely in the running, you know, if I had to guess. <laughs> um, you know, and another guy kind of like going off trombone players who are kind of into rock um, uh, is Trombone Shorty, which uh, he's kind of off in his own genre. I mean, a little bit of rock. That's when he's done some collaborations with Lenny Kravitz. Uh, he's from New Orleans, you know, down here. I mean, some of the people he plays with his band, Dan Orstreiser, who plays Barry Sax, is in town. And uh, he plays a lot of cool stuff. The, 
fun story, one of the first uh, shows I ever saw when I moved here was uh, a trombonist, uh, Rick Trollson, who I ended up studying with, and Dan Orstreiser, who's the very sax player with Trombo Sorty. And it was just the two of them at this bar called Cy Barnola. And it was just like free jazz collaboration, just the two of them. So that was a lot of fun. There was a lot of crazy noises. But yeah, Trombone Shorty's kind of gotten into the public media, like in the mainstream. I know he's had some billboard charts and he started singing a lot more and worked with Lenny Kravitz on doing that. And so that's definitely, I mean, I know personally, whenever I was kind of in high school and ju- going back a little more, even junior high, he was like, uh, I think it was like a big influence on me. And it's funny, I don't listen to a ton of Trombone Shorty now. I kind of think of it like this thing over here, but like, it definitely helped me get into the trombone more because I was like, look at how cool this guy is and he's got (laughs) all this cool music. And uh, I think that's one of the really great things that people like Pankow or Shorty can do now in the modern age is like be a bridge to people getting into trombone. Like it's a little harder. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, especially depending on who you grow up with and all your surroundings, but you may not be like, oh, J.J. Johnson right off the bat or or, or Orby Green or one of these like huge guys, but like a guy like Trombone Shorty might pop up and you like listen to it and then eventually you get a video recommendation to check out Curtis Fuller and then you know, from there you become <laughs> really deep into all of it and then maybe someday you're listening to Albert Mangelsdorf and uh, it's like in some small way all the float. <laughs> yeah, it's all, a, it's all a byproduct of discovering Trombone Shorty, so I can't, you know, like when people ask me, like, are you a fan of Trombone Shorty? Like, yeah. I mean, he actually is a great musician. Uh, he's super musically talented. And he's a great trombonist. And, you know, he just does his thing. He's got, like, a very brass band sound. But also on top of that, like, I'm a huge fan because I feel like he honestly brings so many people into the trombone. There's so many beginners everywhere. And uh, especially living here in New Orleans, I feel like there's, all, like, a huge funk scene here, which is really highly affected by Shorty um so yeah his his real name is troy andrews uh and he does have a jazz album out under that name if you want to do some deep diving for that um so the next guy i want to talk about is not a professional trombonist um and some fishy stuff going on here so david harbour who uh if you don't know the name is the guy who plays hopper uh the cop in stranger things a girl, a girl at a local high school was trying to get him in her senior photos. So she tweeted out, how many, how many uh, likes do I have to get, or retweets do I have to get to get you in my senior photos? And he said, if you get 25,000, I'll show up with my high school hoodie and trombone in hand. And so he did. Whoa. And uh, I'm going to show Ben this. He hasn't seen this yet. And open up some discussions. Because I have, I have some questions. I have some thoughts. All right. Can you see that, Ben? Whoa. All right. So <laughs> here's the thing. The question I have now is, does this guy actually play the trombone? Uh, and I have a couple contextual clues. And I think the first place to start, especially since this is a trombone pod, is the trombone itself. This is, and uh, I, I want you to check yourself and see what you think, but in my mind, this is definitely a box student horn. This is, yeah, yeah it's easy, a, yeah. PB301 for sure. I, and one of the reasons I say that, it's kind of hard to tell the box. I'm not super deep into the box stuff, but the 12s and the 16Ms and all those have like a gold counterweight. This has the Bach written out counterweight. That's the newer Bach too, is it not? Yeah, that's another thing I was going to (laughs) say is there's another picture. I don't know if I can have it on here or not. But I found another picture which was kind of a behind the scenes. And it had uh, had a case uh, by the photo shoot. And the case looked brand new. And the trombone looks brand new, but the case is extra telling. The trombone, he's probably not throwing on the ground a lot. If he actually played the trombone, I, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't yet, but if he actually did, that case would have some scuffles, All right? They brought, <laughs> I think they brought that trombone in for the photo shoot. Um, yeah. 
I'd say I'd say in that vein too that he if he had a Bach beginner horn, it would have to be an older one. He's got money, right? So you'd expect him to have a pro horn if it was a new horn. Yeah, absolutely. But that looks way too new to be his sixth grade horn. <laughs> the the next thing I want to look at in this picture is how he holds it. And this is where it gets like it gets a little hard to tell because I will say looking at some of these because it's kind of hard to tell in the side pictures his left hand placement where he's just holding the brace and the trombone not the slide looks pretty good like uh right in here and uh over here a little bit definitely in this picture kind of looks natural uh i don't know if you ask somebody but the fact in this bottom left picture if you can see that ben's kind of small the fact that he has his thumb up around the brace I don't know, kind of says to me that like he kind of knows what he's doing. Uh, his right hand, though, his slide hand is a lot more telling. And people have really different grips. There's not like one consensus grip. Uh, there's even from the greats, there's a bunch of different stuff. But uh, there's some kind of goofy stuff going on. This one, he's got one where his thumb's like all popped out. And I'm wondering, it doesn't he's like up in first position with his thumb all popped out. I, most trombonists wouldn't be like, oh, I'm back in first time to just uh, let go of the slide. Like, <laughs> it's an <laughs> awful slide technique. And then there's one up in the top right where he's like gripping it, which is something I see beginners and people who don't know how to play trombone doing all the time. Like they think that for some reason they should like full hand around the actual slide, not the brace where you hold it. So, I don't know, man. I mean, it is weird to me if he doesn't play trombone that he said, I'll show up with trombone in hand. Like, that made me think he played in high school. But when, All I, started, right. but when I started okay. investigating, I couldn't really find much. You got, I don't know, man. What do you got? So, here's my theory, just based on what I'm seeing. I believe that he might have been out I think that he played the trombone in sixth, maybe seventh grade, and then put it down to never pick it up again. I think he probably has an old trombone somewhere in his closet. However, being the star he is, probably wasn't anywhere near home and was away uh, whenever he whenever he decided to sh show up for this photo shoot, he bought a he bought a trombone, the first trombone he could find at the local music store uh, for this shoot. That, I think it's either that or this guy doesn't play trombone at all. Yeah. I don't know. Or never. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like your sixth grade theory because it doesn't look I, – I have a hard time believing he played this up into high school. But I could see if he played junior high and then hasn't played in 30 years, you know. Um, yeah. I've seen some bad technique. I've seen I've seen some bad technique. Okay, so I I can see the hand thing, the the slide hand thing. I can see a band director getting annoyed with that, but he hasn't been in it long enough to get it slapped out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if nothing else, go check out the story. It's kind of heartwarming. This this chick got him in her fo her senior photos, and he of course took his, her family to see. Stranger Things and you know typical celebrity stuff and there's some it's it's fun pictures you know it definitely circulated on the internet that's why I went and looked it up. If you uh, guys are listening to this and you guys are just Stranger Things fan, you should try you should try to tweet or talk to to him and uh, ask ask for his side of the story. I, I'm curious. It'd be really cool if we got this answered. Yeah. He's the kind of guy to show up to a photo shoot so if you're listening to this and they're curious there we go yeah i mean she got him in senior photos man maybe if we get enough retweets we can get him on the show <laughs> 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 oh man all right well the next guy i want to talk about i'm going to some more clips here is a guy by the name of xavier woods and uh i don't really keep up with <laughs> wwe so I can't go into the specifics of that, but this guy is on some kind of team um, and he's, uh, but he plays the trombone and he very clearly 
it's actually kind of funny. Like, we're gonna play this clip here. Obviously, it's gonna get loud, <laughs> but uh, it's very clearly him playing and not being dubbed over. So we'll listen. There's two clips, and I pulled up two of them for two different, for another reason. We'll check out the first one real fast. <laughs> Just for contextual evidence or for anyone listening, uh, there's his two side guys are out dancing. He's, I think he's kind of the centerpiece. These are, these are his hype men. <laughs> <laughs> we give to you your Fisher presentation now. Presenting Xavier World. Feature presentation. You know Xavier was trained by Chief J. Trump. We got something to say. We are your new tag champs. New day, new day. I think that's a proportional amount of that. I, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he uh, he's definitely playing himself. I, I, not to just bash the guy. He's obviously got other things going on. In fact, I found out that he has a master's degree in psychology. So he's an educated guy. That's awesome. But he's obviously not uh, a professional trombonist. <laughs> um but yeah, he comes out. I, I do want to look at with Ben what kind of trombone he's playing. Uh, and I, it's kind of relevant because we have coming up next. And I was having a hard time telling what he was playing on. If we can't come to a conclusion, you guys are more than welcome to try and help us out. All right, so there's the back of it, Ben. Can you see what's going on there? Ben. Yeah, I really can't tell what it is. I mean, that is a it doesn't look like it's just something with the counterweight removed. I mean, that definitely looks like it. it's intended to be the counterweight. But uh, yeah, I don't I, know. yeah, I'm not sure if this is a beginner trombone or a pro trombone. It's tough to tell. It does have like a, the typical like bar counterweight. So, and I don't really know a ton about these instruments. Based on what we see next, he could be digging into some really vintage stuff, too. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I'll explain here in a second. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I can't tell. I, uh, if you guys want, go check, give a, go check it out. It's on YouTube. I just typed in Xavier Woods Trombone, and it's, the, it's like the first one that pops up. The video's name is New Day, New Day Xavier Woods Plays the Trombone. So, <laughs> check it out. But... Um, you know, there's the first video. I guess this is like his prop. He like, they start hopping in the ring or whatever, and he just keeps walking around playing trombone. Uh, I think mean, there's been a lot of talk about someone destroying his trombone, and I guess it hasn't happened yet. So that kind of warms my heart that someone didn't just mindlessly bend the trombone in half. Uh, although he is doing some rather dangerous maneuvers with it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I feel like there's a theme here between NASCAR, blue comedy, blue collar comedy tour, and now we have a WWE star with the trombone. I think we're starting to see a demographic here. Maybe the trombone. I think the trombone is the working man's instrument. Is what I'm learning. So. Uh... Oh, man. Maybe there's a video over here where he has even a different one. I don't want to go too too deep down this rabbit hole. This guy clearly has multiple trombones, though. Looks like he has a P-bone or something up there in one of these, but this next one is super interesting. Check this out. We want everybody in here to take a moment to all your horns as we have a moment of silence for Francesca. Okay. <laughs> a little context cool I found out here in a second. Francesca was the name of his trombone. So oh. for some reason, Francesca's been retired. 
and uh, I na- I've named my trombones too. I don't have all of them named. I think my uh, I've had people tell me I should name them all. The only two I've named is my BAC I named Lothan, which is the name of Siegfried's sword in the ring cycle. And my Getson I named Hanzo after Hitari Hanzo from Kill Bill. So, so far my horns are all named after swords, but most people do name them after chicks. Do you, do you name your horn, Bitten? Uh, I do not. <laughs> uh, I should. I, I guess I should jump on that, but I absolutely do not. If you name your horn, leave in the comments the name of your horn. <laughs> I'm very interested. All right, so let's let's keep this clip going. There's some serious booty shaking happening on the screen, just for people who can't see it. <laughs> He's playing the trombone and his hype men are, are booty shaking. For I think this is my next background. <laughs> All right, so a couple observations. Uh, I think he actually sounds a lot better in this video than the first video, um, which means he's kept playing. And uh, another reason I think that is because he definitely upgraded trombones. I'll get a little closer look in on this bad boy here in a second. Go further in the video here, find the. It's kind of hard to tell. All right, Ben, I don't know if you can see that. But this is uh, definitely a King 3 BF. Yeah. Ah, so I see you're, uh, you're feeling a little bit of, of uh, <laughs> solidarity over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and uh, he's, had it, he's clearly had it redone. Uh, the, the, uh, the rotator, the valve looks like brand new. Uh, looks like he had a brush finish done on the, the horn. I kind of thought it was a carbon fiber uh, slide earlier, but I think that's just how the light was hitting it. I think it was silver, like normal. But he uh, he upgraded to a nice trombone for sure, man. So Ooh. I think people might watch this and think, man, these are the kind of people to give trombone players a bad name. However, I, I'm going to go out there and say, I think people like this are giving the trombone a great name. I think this is, this is how, how you get your fifth, and fourth graders to uh, decide they want to play the trombone because that's what <laughs> New Day <laughs> Xavier Wood plays. <laughs> and it creates an enthusiasm about the instrument. I think, I think it's very easy for people to get in their high horse here, but I, I actually kind of like this. I've yeah. never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um. No, I think I'm a fan of this. This is just getting the trombone out in the public eye. Although I do want to play what he says here. It's pretty hilarious. What, what happened to Francesca? What? Go, go. I can't work forever. You know, my brother's got needs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Gets it. Oh boy. <laughs> so that's Xavier Woods. I didn't know who he was before we started researching this. Uh, I'm glad I do now. I didn't really, I didn't know, I don't really know like any WWE people. But I'll go ahead and say that Xavier Woods is now my favorite. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, he plays on a super nice horn now. So that's cool. So I guess the question is, uh, I guess I had to make sure to see if he's actually still wrestling. And apparently he's recovering from, from an injury, but uh, he, an Achilles injury, but apparently he is getting better and recovering. I look forward to watching some of the first WWE <laughs> fights that I've ever watched. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think as a trombone community, we should sow solidarity with Xavier Woods, man. That's, <laughs> this is our guy. All right, so the next guy we're going to talk about, um, as Ben knows, is uh, – so I like – I'll just go ahead and say that I'm a bit of a Trekkie, and uh, <laughs> a lot of that's because my dad's like a huge Star Trek fan, 
And so I kind of got into it, but I mainly only got into the next generation. And uh, I recently just like rewatched the whole show. And the first time I watched it, like as a kid, I was really into Jordy LaForge, who is uh, LeVar Burton from Reading Rainbow and, and Fruits. And then I also really liked uh, Data, which is Brent Spiner, because he was a robot. I liked Jordy LaForge because he was like cool and hip and he had the visor because he was blind. And so, you know, as a kid, that's what grabbed me. But once I got a little older and rewatched the show, uh, I just obviously immediately connected with Riker because he has a beard and he plays trombone and he plays jazz trombone. And uh, he plays it in the show a couple times. And for people who don't know, uh, he did play some of his own stuff on the show. I found out that he was in the marching band at Penn State. And so he keep, he kept playing, and he he plays a two B on the show, which is his two B, which is super cool. Um, and uh, I did I I previously thought that he just played everything on the show, but then uh, this was like some real inconsistencies. Like sometimes he would sound kind of like like an actor, <laughs> and then sometimes he would sound freakishly amazing. And I was like, well, that can't be him. And uh, I recently found out. I recently found out that Bill Watrous was his double who dubbed him over. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's cool because Jonathan Franks had a lot to say about uh, Bill. I have a pretty awesome clip here of him getting interviewed by Will Wheaton, who was, of course, on the show. Uh, right here. Let's play this. Is Ryder the premier jazz trombonist on Nepenthe? Interestingly enough, Riker's still playing the trombone. Yeah. Not well, yeah. but loud. He could be so the just only the time. trombone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was, when I played on the show, you know this story. Uh, if, it, if it sounded like a regular guy, it was me. But when he sounded like he really knew what he was doing, it was this wonderful player. Jack Sheldon. No, it was Bill Watrous. Oh, Jack Sheldon played the trumpet. Right. It was Bill Watrous who was no longer with us, but he was spectacular. He made Riker look so cool. I have had. So, yeah, I think it's super awesome that he acknowledges that Bill Watchers is the man and that he, uh, and, uh, he said he was super cool. He also tweeted out uh, right after Watchers passed away that he said, rest in peace, Bill, you make Riker strong. And uh, I thought that was super cool, too. But I do have some back-to-backs. For people wondering if it's noticeable, uh, it, de- it definitely is. <laughs> and let's check it out. I'm not saying he sounds bad. I'll go ahead and say that. Um, and if you guys know another one, please hit me up. But I'm pretty sure he's the best sounding actor on the trombone. Uh, so here's him playing on the show. Before we keep going, he definitely struggled with that high note. Did you see him like <laughs> it sounded pitched off? Yeah. It was like you could tell he was giving it at us all, man. <laughs> Most good question. Because if you were asking me if I like what you were playing, then the answer is yes. You know, this is a much better way of communicating for you. It's far less confusing than the way you normally speak. I knew I could count on my. <laughs> That's a great clip, man. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like I said, if we were just sitting here listening to trombone, I said it'd be easy to thrash him and be like, oh, it's not that killing or whatever. But for an actor, I think he sounds really good. Um, but that being said, <laughs> this next clip uh, where he sounds way better, you can tell the difference between the two. And this clip is hilarious. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
I just have to start the video and then we'll get to the end. <laughs> a couple things. One, uh, this is just a hilariously like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, stereotypical scene. <laughs> like in the smoky bar. It's on It's on the holodeck for people who want some context in the show. And uh, this is like a smoky bar and there's a chick who's like looking at him. Uh, the other people are obviously actors. The bass player, I don't... <laughs> It's like he put no effort into like thinking about where his hand should be. Like he's got, he's got it down in thumb position. Uh, if you're, I mean, if you're, you might not. Be, he's got it down way down on the neck. <laughs> he's just playing like open strings, and it's like he's playing some crazy high stuff. Uh, the piano player is just kind of playing around, and in the middle of this, the piano player just gave him an ugly look, and that's gonna come back up. So. <laughs> Hey man, what's it doing to you? What makes you say that? Hey, look at her. Maybe it's my music. Yeah, or well, about that, don't give up your day job. Uh, if you if you didn't hear what he just said, the guy said the chick digs in. He goes, "Well, maybe it's my." He goes, "What makes you say that?" He goes, "Well, it's the way she's looking at you." And then he goes, "Maybe it's my music." And then the piano player goes, "Well, about that, don't quit your day job," which is extra hilarious, knowing that it's Bill Watchers. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, as you can hear, he sounds incredible. There's another episode where he plays trombone. Uh, and I have to like, this one's a little harder to dig up. If you watch the show, you can go find it. Um, but he like purposely clips the note at the end and I'm not sure who's playing in that one. As you heard, like if you listen to both of them, you'll be able to tell who it is. But uh, yeah, I thought that clip was great. He obviously was a big fan of Bill's and uh, you know, he obviously actually still plays trombone. Like I said, that's his 2B on the show. Um, and as far as people playing trombone on the side or whatever, I'd be interested to see if anyone out there is better that you know of. Yeah, I think this one was a perfect storm for you, Cody, but between uh, how big of a sci-fi fan you are in general. And then, yeah, as we dove into this learning that Bill Watrous was playing, for a minute, man, I thought this guy was really good. I think uh, he definitely mimes playing better than a lot of the actors on here, too. I think it's because he knows what he's doing. You mentioned this bass player. The clip you got paused on is actually kind of funny at the moment. I don't know. This guy must be seven foot tall. I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. Dude. Or he just doesn't know how to lift his bass up. He's, he's got it way below him. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not going to go on too far, but even with the peg all the way down on my bass, I, I don't get close to that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention was the uh, another like example of the trombone popping up that I think everyone's super familiar with is the peanuts, where the trombone with a mute in is the uh, is the voice of adults. And uh, I learned recently that the new movie they use trombone shorty, but when I went and did some digging. I found that uh, there's been four other guys, who, or sorry, three other guys who did it. Um, and the very first person ever to do it was Frank Rosalino. Um, and he did it for You're in Love, Charlie Brown. It was a short summer, Charlie Brown. And then Milt Bernhardt did it for A Boy Named Charlie Brown. And then Chuck Bennett did it for A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. But I just thought it was super cool that it was the super famous trombone player. It makes sense. Frank was probably doing a lot of recording work out in LA. But I do think that's another way that trombone's been used, um, you know, is like the sad trombone sound, the wah, wah, wah. Like there's, there's a comical element to the trombone if you don't really know what you're doing. And uh, 
it was also used in uh, American Pie, <laughs> where he's playing it upside <laughs> down. But um, yeah, man, what do you got? You have anything else, Ben, for uh, trombone in the popular media? Uh, not that I, not that I could find. I, I will say, I have never heard that Frank Rosalino did a couple of these, and I'd be curious to see uh, a more expanded list. I'm looking at this list with you. I'd be curious to see uh, who did the more popular ones, like the Christmas special and things like that. But uh, that's really interesting, and I wouldn't have even thought to go uh, to go look for the Charlie Brown thing. So that's really neat that you dug that up. Apparently, it was a topic that people have already done some research into. Yeah, it's a little thread on Trombone Chat. Actually, the person who started the thread on Trombone Chat even was uh, Doug Yeo, the incredible bass trombonist, if you're not familiar. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, that leads us to kind of the end of things and overarching thoughts. And uh, for myself, I, you know... Looking at overarching thoughts, I mean, first of all, my mentality coming into this was that the trombone doesn't really get shown that much in the public eye. Like, oh, it's not like it's kind of weird how it's gone through periods of super popularity and then kind of out. And it's weird in 2020 for me to imagine Glenn Miller, like a trombonist, being the most popular musician in the country. Um, but, you know, I think the overarching thought that I came to after all this was that some of these people who get thrashed for not being Joe Alessi or for not being, you know, the J.J. Johnson, Slight Hamptons, that kind of thing in the world, like, uh, still serve a great purpose, you know, like Trombone Shorty and Pank Al. And whenever we get Trump on the public media, even if it's not being played at the highest level, perhaps, or if it's doing a role that doesn't require it to be, to have a ton of facility, I think that can be a bridge like that can be an inviting thing so i i just like i just want more and more of that like i don't i don't want to be snobby about it i think that we're not really in a position to be snobby and if you disagree with me like let me know i i can uh, i can understand trying to preserve things as well but i feel like we're in a position where we just need to get out as much as we can so that we can bring more people to the instrument absolutely i i definitely agree with that uh i i've gone through periods where i've kind of uh you know sworn off some of these uh people that pe uh, some pe folks would call sellouts or things like that but nowadays you know i realize hey us tremonas have to band together we have to have xavier woods on the front line scooping up our fourth and fifth grade students so they can steer them towards trombone and then once they're there they can start listening to trombone shorty and then keep going from there i mean it's it's a it all is connected uh i don't i don't think necessarily just because you like those things doesn't mean you can't also like more serious music i think it just means that hey you enjoy the trombone and i just i'm just thrilled with some of the things i'm seeing uh especially like I said from trombone shorty where he's becoming more a more and more popular name i forgot to mention that earlier when i was talking about pankow but uh yeah, Trombone Shorty. My parents know who Trombone Shorty is. I completely forgot about it. Forgot to mention him, but my parents definitely do. And uh, as we get more common household trombone names, I think the better off the community will be. And the more serious people will take us. Yeah, absolutely, man. So I guess that brings us to the, uh, the album recommendation for the week. And uh, we did a bass trombone last time, which was uh, kind of a bit thing since he's the bass trombonist. And so this time I wanted to do a bit of a guilty pleasure and uh, do one of my favorite albums of all time, which is uh, Osteology by Conrad Herwig. Um, it's a two trombone album. It's him and Steve Davis, who I think are some of the greatest improvisers alive, uh, some of the greatest trombonists alive, some of the greatest musicians alive. Um, just two of the top cats in New York have kind of different influences and they complement each other extremely well. Um, the drummer on the album is one of my favorite all-time drummers, Jeff Tate Watts. He's just a, he's a bad, bad man. <laughs> uh, piano player is Dave Kakowski, who uh, may not be the biggest name to you, but if you start checking around, he's played on everything. Like he's like a guy. And so is the bass player, James Ginnis. Uh, it's just an incredible album. 
there's a, a couple tunes on there that stand out to me. Uh, Devil May Care, so they have a great arrangement of um, Siege of Song Flute, uh, which is kind of cool. I play a little bit. It's a John Coltrane tune that's on Giant Stuff that so doesn't get played a whole lot. But they took the beginning of his solo and turned it into like a B section, which is super cool. Uh, just some of the arranging on the album is amazing. There's a tune, Kenny K which is devoted to Kenny Kirkland, who's a really phenomenal piano player who died much too young. Uh, and it's that Conrad was able to work with so he has to devote the album or devote the tune to him. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Osteology, which by the way, is an incredible name for a, yeah. trombone, a trombone album. Uh, I didn't know this <laughs> before the album, but osteology is uh, the study of bones. So yeah, that's that's. I was about to mention that if you weren't going to <laughs> very cleverly name the album, uh, it is available on Apple Music, and I assume if Cody recommends it, it's going to be available on Spotify as well. Yeah, it is on Spotify. I will say, if you go looking for it on Spotify, um, that uh, Spotify is a terrible like like uh, listings place. So it's not under his albums it's under albums he appears on which a bunch of his albums are uh unfortunately like heart of darkness and unseen universe but go to his appeared on and go uh, and you'll see it down in there um and then there's also a fun little kind of tidbit from the album there's a, a recording on youtube that he did in switzerland which was like during that album when he was doing the two trombones with like a slightly different personnel. He's got uh, Jackie Terrace on, on piano, who's a great piano player. Um, on drums is Terry Lynn Carrington. And on bass is Lars Danielson. And since it's a Swedish festival, I think he's a Swedish bass player. Um, the other trombonist on the video though is not Steve Davis. It's Nils Langren. If you're not familiar with Nils, he's like super bad, man. He's he's the, a Swedish trombonist. He um, actually inspired me to really dig deep on a bunch of Swedish stuff. I ended up doing a paper on it, and I think it's probably a product of him. Uh, he famously has a red trombone, but uh, he's incredible at jazz. He's incredible at funk. Um, and in Sweden, he's like kind of a pop star. He's gotten some fame singing. Uh, but yeah, it's super killer definitely check it out uh i think i remember kind of like when i found this video at uam on my undergrad i don't know if ben remembers this but i remember like watching this all the time and then every time something would come over i was like we got to watch this video and <laughs> uh it's super cool man and then the album is incredible uh definitely something to check out so uh thank you guys for tuning in always appreciate it and uh thank you for listening Happy shouldn't.